okay. there is no friendship between a man and a female. It is just <laughs> Wow. No, this, a, this, this is can be controversial. But hey, 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 viewers, this is my opinion, okay? <laughs> All right. This is not professional <laughs> advice. Okay. This is my opinion, okay? okay? Which a lot of guys complain that my wife, my wife is not submitting, but you submit to someone too. Women should submit to their husband, as the Bible says. But also, as men, we need to check ourselves what are we submitting to? So we're supposed to submit to Christ. There's a lot of emotion that goes in. So you have to be able to support emotion. And if you're not able to support it emotionally, it's going to be a kind of be a problem. You know, in so then, how 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 can we as men be able to cope with those? Uh, First of all, but nobody asks a question like, "How do you stay poor?" You are watching the Fortunate Mindset Podcast. So there is this quote that I've read um, in the Bible that says, "Love your neighbor." the way you love yourself. And to me, the way I understand it, it's like you really need to love yourself first before you love somebody else. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, if somebody uh, can also have a different opinion to that, then when we hear everybody saying like, you need to love yourself first, it's not like in kind of selfishness, that's why I bring up this quote that says, self-love is not a selfish disposition, but a foundation from which we are actually able to offer love to others. Yeah. I would bounce off to that uh, with that and just say, in order for you to give your best, you have to be at your best. So you have to, uh, in everything that you're doing, you can't just... Uh, try to give the best of yourself while within yourself you're not full. Mm. You want to always be complete before you can try to help someone else or love someone else um, so that that person receives the best version of you. Man, that, I love that. I've never heard that from you before. <laughs> <laughs> that's really great. That's, that's really deep. Like you need to be the best version of yourself yeah. for you to offer something to somebody else. And, yeah, exactly. And that's how a lot of people are going to be able to benefit from you, whether it's um, your peers that you're working with for projects, whether it's your spouse, whether it's your children, whether it's your brothers, your sister, your parents, anything. People will benefit from you whenever you're at your best, not whenever you're mediocre. I love that. So today we have a really special guest that we talk about this topic that I've been waiting for days, months. But before we get into that, welcome back to the Fortunate Mindset Podcast. We would appreciate you being back here and in this podcast where we talk about different challenges that we're going through as youth, either it's in relationship, business, entrepreneurship, education, and just in life. So today we are going into the conversation about relationships. And we have bring Mr. Bonner. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> we brought welcome, Mr. Welcome Mr. Welcome to the podcast. Uh, thank you. I don't know how I can respond to that intro. That's that's one of the best intro I've had. <laughs> <laughs> so, Amani, uh, or otherwise, Bonner, give yeah. us your title. What are you right now? Uh, yeah. As in, what do you, uh, your work, occupation, and what are you actually, your relationship status and everything? <laughs> Relationship you know? style. I, don't, I don't get to do to, to tell us. Uh, <laughs> that was close in five, five, almost six years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what I do, do for a living or do? Yeah, everything. I'm yeah, everything. What I do uh, for a living, I do my best. Uh, <laughs> I love that. I do but my best to make I a living. I do my best. I do my best in everything. Mm -hmm. But but jokes aside, uh, yeah. I am a, a sales project manager uh, for IT company, for IT firm. I uh, I manage projects uh, for for the company. Uh, I am uh, uh, also an IT enthusiast, so I, I love IT a lot. Uh, uh, that's work wise. But uh, uh, <clears throat> time of family, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a dad, but I'm a husband first for being a dad. Mm. I'm a husband, a dad of two, and uh, soon to be three. And oh, that's uh, nice. Yeah. That's great. And I'm, that's a, amazing. I'm also a minister, so. Yeah. Oh, amazing. Yeah. So uh, how does it feel like to be a husband and 
a dad, especially of like two beautiful ladies. Yeah. To be husband is the best thing. <laughs> you get young people out there, you know, get mm. married, but the right person. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> but, but to be a dad is, is very fulfilling in, in a sense where just imagine you get to watch these little ones grow. Some of them really looks like you. Uh, but the annoying part is they get to do things that you used to do as a kid. And it's, it's annoying because it's like, ah, this is me, you know. That's that's annoying part. Mm -hmm. And it's also scary. Uh, it's scary in a, in a sense where as, as, as a Christian man and as a dad in general, you want to raise your child in a way that is really pleasing to God. That's right. And you keep thinking, what about if, what if I'm not doing the best? the best job what if i'm not doing a good job so that's the scary part of it and, and of course you also because i have two girls you kind of think the best way to protect your kids the best way to you know, to keep them not just protected so that's wow that's some, some of the things that as a dad i always have to think about so how do you how do you know that you're in god's will as a leader in the house in terms so, of uh, your, your role so, so the first thing what i think is uh, this is again what i'm trying to say is what i do and then this is kind of, it's not like a professional but this is my opinion as, as a dad and then uh, also it has to involve being a christian I, I i believe first of all you yourself have to be led for you to lead for example you cannot lead where you're not i cannot tell my kids we have to pray before this and you don't do pray so you have to teach them how to do it and do it by example. Example, and 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 that's why you see a lot of a lot of people say uh, my kids, my dad didn't show me how to do things because they, they didn't see it being done in their house. Yeah, they didn't see it being up. So we have to nurture that, and it has to come from you and your wife first. You and your wife have to lead an example. If it's to pray, you guys, you guys pray together. You guys have time, maybe at night, maybe when the kids goes to bed. The kids have to see that, and you have to lead your wife to doing that. So the kids can, because the kids really learn at a young age. <clears throat> they they see things, and they they kind of look at, okay, daddy's doing this, mommy's doing this. So as a leader, you want to be an example. As a leader, you want to be the one showing them, this is how things are done, rather than telling them, do this, and not doing that. That's, that's, that's at least that's how I, for, I, I try to enforce that. As a Christian leader in my house, things need to be done by me myself being a servant leader than being uh, uh, sure. the mm -hmm. person who just direct them to things. Uh, actually, um, before even getting to that, you know, before you getting married, mm -hmm. you need to start somewhere. Yeah. So we're now talking already about being a father, mm -hmm. being a husband mm -hmm. first, being a father, then being a leader. But before that, uh -huh. you have to start. <clears throat> somewhere yeah so yeah. bring us into how can a man start really if i can say that dating mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. the right way mm -hmm. uh, to bring you to the marriage dating courtship and like well, yeah marriage. courtship and all of that the the right way this, as a christian the the right way as a christian yeah into dating mm -hmm. first of all uh, you have to find a woman or a, or, a or, a, or a child of God who also is in the same direction as you, as you that you're going. You cannot try to get someone who is not a Christian and try to convert them. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's difficult. And you may end up having someone who is maybe two different faiths, faith in, in the family and you're raising kids with two different faiths. So how how do you do that? For me, I've I always looked for people who are equally yoked with me, equally yoked in a sense where people who have my, my beliefs, people who are Christians, uh, and people who who I know that they they believe in the same thing, and people who know Christ, because you can be a Christian but you really don't have Christ. So I, at least for me, when I met my wife, she she was teaching Sunday school. You know, and I was also in a youth minister back in those days. So that's that's how we bonded. We bonded through the the word. That's that's how we started talking. We started like we started talking. She was she was she used to go to her Bible studies and we talk. And she would ask him this 
questions about the, the Bible. She was interviewing me. And and so at the sense I was also interviewing her. Because I'll ask her, what do you what do you want in a husband? You know, I'll ask her such questions. She ask me, what do you think a Christian wife looks like? So mm-hmm. in a courtship, that's why you guys need to decide how it's going to go about. And and when you're dating, <clears throat> that's why you, you need to talk about how many kids you will have, how are we gonna raise our kids, uh, and what, what, what kind of names are we gonna give our kids. As we had our names for our kids way before we got married. And 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 and, and if we have kids, are we going to to raise them for are we gonna have sleepovers? Uh, we, we, is that what we want? So as Christians, you wanna also talk about all those small things, but before that, we have to make sure that the person you are dating, the person you are talking to, is a believer. I am not against dating someone who is a believer, but what I'm just trying to say is, it's 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 difficult converting them to be a believer, or they might convert you to not be a believer. It's also possible. So it for me, I think you know, dating a believer, it's it's very crucial to raising a family. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, <clears throat> I want to I want to talk a little bit about uh, well, you mentioned a good point in terms of um, courtship, mm-hmm. uh, but I want to jump into gender roles, mm-hmm. right? Uh, how can how can you create a good balance in the home as a leader, mm-hmm. and then also expect your your spouse to be able to uh, hold specific role that you also may have. Uh, you may also have certain responsibilities that you have to uphold. I think one way to do that is 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 also has to do with uh, all of you have to understand that first of all we live in America. Life is very busy here. Yeah. Uh, we cannot come with a mindset where uh, I'm a man. I cannot cook. I cannot clean. We have to. We have to make sure that you you are helping your wife in uh-huh. in, in, in in those kind of things because. Also, you guys are not married yet, but when, when you help her in, in those kind of things, they, there's really end results later on because this, the end result, when you get married, maybe you can understand this. When you help your wife, those small things, there's really good end result. Those who are married understand what I'm saying. There's really good end result either at night or maybe you because you, know, you put her in a really good mood. So, so, so there's that one benefit of it. Two, there's, there have to be a, a, a very open communication in, in a sense where the wife have to be have to feel very uh, have to feel very supportive because if the husband is not supportive in in things that the wife is doing or the her wife is not supportive of the husband there will be very there will be a lot of friction so first of all they have to be that supportive but the most important thing. Those, that family has to be centered in Christ. Because yeah. all the roles we talk about, being a husband, being a wife, they are very defined in the Bible, what the man's role to provide, to protect. You know, and the wife, the role is to nurture. You know, what you give a wife is going to multiply to you. So we have to, as Christians, we have to really go back to the Bible and see what, what is our roles. It's not. It's not about uh, me thinking. Okay, I'm a. I'm a man. I'm no. Uh, my role is once. Once I. I bring back on home. That's it. Because if you bring back on home, some wives also bring back on. Yeah. yeah. Right. Sure. They also bring back on. Mm-hmm. But even if they bring back on, where are they getting the foundation of their life? That's why you have to go back to the biblical foundation of. Uh, knowing Christ and knowing what the, what the, our roles are, what what's man's role is, you have to teach. You have to be able to teach your your, your family. You have to be able to uh, to provide for your family. You have to be able to to protect your family. So that's 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 how I think you you can get to balance all these things by going back to the Bible and focusing what the roles are, rather than imagining our own thing or just coming up with our own our own beliefs, because there's a lot of beliefs out there, mm-hmm. you know. So everybody can have their own belief, but at the end of the day, what does the Bible say about their beliefs? That's, that's what I think. Mm. I mean, um, that just brings me into this kind of thought of asking, because you said everything has to be centered in Christ, yeah. right? 
So what does it make to be a really God-fearing man? Mm. Like a valuable man that can have that kind of leadership in the mm. house. Because mm. you said to lead, you have to be led. Mm -hmm. To let yourself, right. yeah. you know, led. Yeah. Then the question is, you might have given maybe the answer to that, but the question, mm. led by who? Mm. Right. Yeah. You might be led by who? And how now will you be leading your family as a God-fearing yeah. man? Yeah. So, so first of all, the Bible is, is, is pretty clear uh, on this kind of matter. Uh, to be led, you have to be led by Christ as a man so that you can lead your family. Two, the Bible teaches us as a man, the most important thing for us to our wives is to love our wives. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, husband, love your wives as Christ, love the church. Christ lo loved the church to a point where he had to die for the church. Yeah. You see that kind of Getting love? to that point. Mm. You see that kind of love? So, so as, as a that's man, I'm not, I'm not saying that that's, that's how you lead your, your mm. woman, or that's how you lead your, your, your marriage. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is, our first mandate is to love our wives. And then, because if you love our, our wife, which means we are hearing from God, because God tells us to love them, then if we are loving them, we are listening to God. Mm -hmm. Now, listening to God entails following his word. What does following his word mean? Being a Christ follower. Mm -hmm. Being a Christ follower means doing what is God's will. You know, not only following the commandments, but also res respecting God's authority. Yeah. So that all that is part of, all that is part of what God wants us to do as husband. You know, you have to be led by Christ instead of being led by anyone else. So, if, if first of all, if as a husband or as a as a man in a house, if you want to lead, you have to be led by Christ. And led being led by Christ means you have to follow the Word of God. You have to spend time in the Word of God. You have to you have to read the Bible and understand what the Bible says about things, rather than just you know uh -huh. just doing your own thing. So, reading the Word and following Christ is very important. Not just anything. That's what I think. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask a very pivotal question, mm -hmm. maybe controversial, but mm -hmm. it's from what I'm from what I'm hearing from you. Mm -hmm. And so the word, the word of God is not equal to man; it's above man. It's above, which is what we, what yes. I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, the same thing with a woman and no. a man. L let's let's get this straight. <laughs> this is this is this is this is the, the kind of controversial. But what I what I believe and what the Bible says is very is very is very. It's very clear. The Bible is very clear on this matter. When God gave the the instruction, when the God created a, a man, who did the God give instructions on how to run the Adam. The, the, the garden? Adam, right? You straight, tell us. Straight to Adam. You tell us. <laughs> it's Adam, right? Yeah, sure. It was given yeah. to Adam. Mm. God gave Adam. And mm. what did God tell? When God created Adam, uh -huh. God did not tell Eve. When God created Eve, did God tell told Eve, these are my instructions? Who, who did God tell to tell Eve the instruction? Adam, Adam right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is, as much as we are going to say that we are equal, God, I know the world thinks, want to say that we are equal, but in God's eyes, men are given the mandate to lead. We have to lead. We, we hear from God and we lead our families. That's what, that's what has to happen. I'm not saying that women can't lead when there's uh, there's not a man, but if there is a man, a man has to be the leader of the home. That's what the Bible gives us. If if you look at the Bible and the God was giving everything to, to Adam, God gave Adam the the rules and instruction, and He commanded him to give that to the wife, and that's how it should be. You listen to God, and you come and tell your family, "This is how we are living. This is how we're going to this is going to go about." Mm -hmm. that, that's 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 how it should go again there is a lot of beliefs out there and that's that's just that's how my bible tells me right what everybody's right. bible says mm -hmm. nowadays there's a lot of interpretation of these oh that that i mean you mentioned a word that say um your word you say like uh the bible says uh that the man have to love the wife mm. but seems like you didn't finish that scripture because 
if I've read the same Bible that mm -hmm. you've read, it mm -hmm. says like, man, you love your wife, mm -hmm. and then wife be submissive to, be to your husband. To, to your husband. Uh -huh. So, and with the modern world, the modern dating life and um, courtship and all of that, uh, we living, I think a lot of things mm -hmm. going out there. Yeah. So what would you say about the submission of a woman of yeah, a yeah. wife in I, the I, I did not I did not leave I left it intentionally because I knew you were gonna bring the letter <laughs> on <laughs> <laughs> you can't read that quote without saying the second part, the second part. <laughs> <laughs> they go oh my god yeah, yeah. Um, but I think I think submission is very important uh, but the important thing that we also need to understand as men as much as we want a woman to submit they have to submit on authority so what I'm saying is this, if you're not submitting to your authority as a man, mm -hmm. a woman should not submit to you if you're not submitting to God. Well said. Yeah. yeah. So if, if, you're, if, yeah. if you as a man, you're not, you're not following what Christ is telling you to do, why should this woman submit to you? Yep. Mm. So mm. As, a, as men, we also need to understand that for our women to submit, we have to submit to someone. Yeah. And that is Christ, which a lot of guys complain that my wife, my wife is not submitting but are you submitting to someone too mm. because we're Spring. supposed to submit to christ right yeah i'm not saying that women shouldn't submit but i'm saying women should submit to their husband as the bible says but also as man we need to check ourselves what are we submitting to so we're supposed to submit to christ mm -hmm. now going back to your point the bible is very clear that women are supposed to submit submission is different to different people Submission to like for an African man, submission would be bring food to the table for me. You know, when I was growing up, we didn't have this kind of bathroom. Take the water, bath water to me so I can take a shower. Mm -hmm. Those 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 can be submission to different things. Submission in America can be, uh, this this is how we are going to lead to do the housing. This is how we're going to to run the household, and the woman submits what the man the man is saying. But for you to to have that kind of submission. I really do think first you have to listen from God. You have to tell your wife, God is telling me to do this. And that's how they will submit and listen because you're all submitting from somewhere. That's I know and I know that can be a very controversial topic, but that's that's what I think. Yeah. That's that was good. I mean I don't know tell her what you say about it. No, I mean what I would add, add to that, I think that's why it's important for both parties to be God fearing. Um, if you as a man are God fearing, of course your authority, you know yeah. who who you're submitting to. Mm -hmm. It's not as if men are not submitting to anything. Mm -hmm. You as a man, of course, you're set to be a leader, but you're also uh, submitting to the higher authority, yeah. which also then trickles down into the family uh, unit, and, and it becomes very organic, right? And 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 then now we have a lot of fem feminists and all that, you know, but but. I will tell you for a fact, there's a lot of feminists who, when they see a very, a, a very good man who listens to God, and they, they, they also have that submission from God, they, they submit, but you have to show them what to submit to. Yeah. So as husband, we have to show our wives what are, what are they submitting to, that way they can submit. Hmm. So you, you literally mean, like, you need to show them, like, you need to prove that I am submitting to something else. Prove, them. prove and show is different. Uh, can you tell more about that? Can we because because if I say I have to prove, mm -hmm. which means, uh, for example, I'm telling, if for example, I, I come and tell my wife, uh, yeah. you know, God told me to um, that today, I think it's important that we start uh, giving more, mm. right? And, he, and then if you say, if my wife says, prove, prove to me, mm -hmm. that means there's not trust what God told me. Mm. Mm. But if she's a submissive wife, she'll be yeah. like, okay, 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 honey, that's, that's okay. How, how do you suggest we do that? Because if God told you to do this, God is going to lie out. No. He's going he's gonna, he's, he's to lie out a way for you to do it. Right? God is going to tell you, okay, you need to give more in these areas. You're going to come and tell your wife, honey, you need to, do, to dig more in these areas. If your wife is not submissive, you're going to question all that. But if she is again, she's gonna say, "How how does how does how does that look like for us?" She's gonna ask those kind of question to make sure that you have a plan because God is gonna give you a plan as well. Right. So that's that's what I'm saying. So the question now becomes: Does if a woman is questioning the authority of a man, mm -hmm. 
is that now her showing lack of submissiveness the question is how is she, is she questioning the authority she's saying because there's two, there is you can take this differently there's, there's two different ways we can we can answer that question one is he, is she asking you questions like for example the example i gave uh for god asked me we need to give more right mm -hmm. and the wife is asking you how how are we going to go about that mm -hmm. i don't think that's that is a questioning that that's questioning your authority yeah mm -hmm. because she just want to know the guidance the guidance mm -hmm. i don't think that's that's that is now if she's saying uh no you're just talking about your own stuff now that is questioning your authority because you heard from god you know now that's question if if that becomes the case now that woman they need to have a conversation with god or they, they need to find an elder in the church to talk about this kind of this kind of things or maybe if is a, a a spiritual counselor that they need to go to and talk about this because submission can be a very issue in, in marriages so that, that I, I think that can be a problem because that's because that's that's a very important issue giving in family in in, in, in the household and because that's how you also teach your kids principles of giving because you're giving you and the wife so that's that's what i think well the reason why i asked that question is uh is very simple because a woman was made to be a helpmate yeah for a, for a man mm -hmm. and um i think with that also comes certain responsibilities that a woman also has mm -hmm. um not only in terms of submissiveness but also to watch for her man yeah. so if you see your man veering into a way that it's not going to be good for the family mm -hmm. is he's get, there's a dead end in where he's going you're at, you're there to advise him yeah. to help him so that he doesn't go into a yeah. dead end yeah. so if you question an authority his authority if he's going to a dead end i don't think that's yeah. going outside of being it's not uh, not being submissive yeah that's why i say I, I i i agree with you i just don't think it's wrong if if you come up with something god is telling something and the woman's asked question hey how are we going to do this is this yeah. is this is this the right way how, how we supposed to what's the plan because mm -hmm. for example when we first bought our when we first bought our house i came and i said hey you know what the rent is going up you need to buy our house. you need to buy our own house you know i had just been a few months in my job how are we gonna do that i, said, I don't know but the guys gonna make up a way she, she she didn't say we are not there yet she, she she agreed and we had to come up with a plan to do it what i'm trying to say is there is questioning the authority and there is questioning the authority to know what the plan is and also to uh, to understand that is this really coming from god or you're not listening from god right right so i i, I totally agree with you. yeah I, I do agree with that so mm. so um we're living in a time where a lot of things have changed mm -hmm. where there is now uh, a difference between what happened 15, 20 years ago mm -hmm. and what is going on today, yeah. whereby they call modern relationships, yeah. modern women, modern this, modern that, mm -hmm. modern whatever. So what does the Bible say is about the roles of men and women mm -hmm. in the family or relationships mm -hmm. that can be an example on what people call more than relationship or more than this and that the the, the modern the term modern is, has been really misused a lot uh that's in my opinion but but really i don't think even if we live today or we live 100 years the bible does not change whatever was yeah. was there in the bible 50 years ago is still this is still true today it's going to still be true in 50 years it's going to be it's going to be true in a hundred years. It's not going to change. The role of a man is still to provide, is still to protect. You know, is still, is still to make sure that the the family is okay, and 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 that's the the primary role of a man is to lead, to lead, to provide, to protect, and the role of, the role of a woman is to nurture, and it is to 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 be a, a a supporter, a companion. Now, a companion will not, or a supporter, will not come to support what is not there. 
this this way this way as, as men sometimes sometimes we we go wrong for example you cannot ask someone to come and join you to support you to something that you're not even studying so a lot of us i i made this mistake too i i got married didn't have a job we have nothing but i think as a man you have to show your wife where you are heading for them to come and join you you cannot you cannot come you don't have anything and you want her to come and and bring what you don't what you're not going to give her so in this modern world i i still believe that the role of a man should be to support uh, you know to protect to lead and to provide those, those are the three major ones i know there is there's usually five but the one i can think of my my head is support protect and lead a man should be able to do that a man should be, be the foundation of the house not just the not just the head the foundation because they we layer the foundation of how we're going to run our household we layer the foundation of what our kids are going to learn what our kids are going to uh to learn from us who are who our kids are going to t- talk to that sh- that should be that should be our job as men and not just you know if if, if you look at the society right now it's it's very difficult as a man to really provide because if you can provide a woman can this lady who make better income than their husbands so if you're saying my job is to provide as a man well, i can do that you know so there is that confusion but a uh, a woman's work should be to to help and to nurture whatever the husband bring they multiply it and nurture it that's yeah. that should be the main role of a wife mm-hmm. yeah. yeah so um uh, talking that's really excellent talking about providing um one thing that i just want to add on that is um providing does not really necessarily have to be just about finance mm-hmm. a man can provide emotionally yeah a man can provide uh like to be there for the person to look at their mood their yeah. feeling because when you say like a man should always provide that's true mm-hmm. and we as men we always see like i should be a provider in finance like giving money making sure like everybody is having uh, what to eat what yeah. to uh, their needs and all of the, th- the stuff but we ignore the emotional part we ignore yeah. the feeling part because this woman there will be a day where she doesn't have a good mood mm-hmm. there will, there will be a day that she she's not really feeling her 100% she might and, have and, like and coming from ahead. a married man i'm telling you it's mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's that's a very important aspect of providing yeah. provision mm-hmm. um the 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 uh, the women are really very very emotional people yeah. and i don't want to get in trouble for this but <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just saying women are very very emotional. I have two daughters and I can tell you for a fact mm-hmm. uh, they are very emotional. Like small thing it, it 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 can be a very you, for you if like man this this is no. nothing. Yeah this is nothing but for them it's there's a lot of emotion that goes in. So you have to be able to support emotionally, you know. And if you're not able to support emotionally it's going to be a, a can be a problem you know in a so then how 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 can we as men be able to cope with those uh with those first emotions? of all sometimes we want you to listen and don't have don't bring solution because uh, for me if, if you come to me with a problem yeah. i'm going to try to fix it yeah. generally as that's, men do that's as men do yeah actually not to carry cut you off i've been uh watching this show i don't want to name say the name but uh there's this guy that says why men always tend to find a solution when you bring them a problem it's only because they know like you would bring up a problem next time so they want to get rid of this problem so that when you bring the next problem it doesn't have to be like two or three more problems yeah. again so yeah but it doesn't uh, work how sometimes do you, it doesn't work sometimes so you how can, do you do that sometimes you can uh, again like, well, honey i love you if you listen to this <laughs> <laughs> you, you can you can talk about same thing three times or hundred times mm-hmm. uh and just because she th- some they thought about it again and then and then come back and then they're like it's the same issue it still comes back mm-hmm. it's just because of a trigger that comes because because they are very 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 emotional being and so sometimes they really don't want you to to just so you just want to listen and 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 contribute to their problems contribute not like add their problem like 
empathize with them say yeah, yeah honey i understand that that was wrong uh sometimes just my wife is a nurse so she comes back from work with this patient she just want to talk about it look i'm 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 an engineer i'm i'm not used to this i i work mostly by myself <laughs> you know so i'm not used to this kind of thing mm-hmm. so but 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 when when they want to talk they really want you to listen and contribute their conversation yeah. even if you're not there but whatever they are saying you have to start contributing so you have to start so that's the emotional support part of it and and you have to be very good listener that's what i've learned from my marriage you really have to listen listening is a key like if you want to support your wife emotionally listen if you need you have to take mentally notes take them because they will, they will talk for 30 minutes and ask you what they said 30 minutes ago <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, uh, earlier you were talking about uh in terms of concept of a man being able, yeah. having to love their wife right um so there's a book that i was reading a while back ago uh, by dave chapman uh the, the love the five love languages mm, yeah Um so that book talks about just various different ways yeah. people receive, receive love. love. Yeah, sure. And people g- can give can love. Can give love. So yeah. talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I and think, that I think that actually if you if you're you dating and planning to get married and I need this guy saying <laughs> he's paying attention. <laughs> he's paying good attention. <laughs> I, I, I need to <laughs> you need to do the love language. You need mm-hmm. to do I know the book I've the, read the, the, book. the love the love language. Is it love language? I, I think, think it's love, love, love language. Love, love yeah. language. You, you need to uh to check it out. It's good. Yeah. The reason why this is what I'm saying that it's important to know how your wife wants to be loved. Yeah. For example, some some like spending time they just want you to be their presence. I don't like that. Quality time. <laughs> quality really time. Yeah. No, I, I like quality time but I don't want you to be in my presence. I like yeah. my own time. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like my time but I don't want you to be my presence. <laughs> I like like I want to spend time with you. Mm-hmm. But for like few minutes yeah. they let me be by myself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you get in trouble. <laughs> Really? No, no, my wife knows this. She knows like she doesn't know this. What I'm saying is people have different love languages. Sure. And your love language may not be your wife's. Yeah. I like I like being served. Mm-hmm. My wife likes being served. Okay. So that's a love language that we all need. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like I like her to serve me and she likes me to serve her. Okay. You see that's 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 a that's that's a love language that mm-hmm. I like and she likes. She likes me spending time with her. I do not. You know. Mm. And, and so she doesn't like gifts. She doesn't like gifts as much. Okay. You know. But then I like gifts. Mm-hmm. You know. So what I'm trying to say is you need to know how you're going to love your spouse. Yeah. And your spouse need to know how they're, they're going to be loved. Love. Well the, mm. the thing is if I can add to that <clears throat> things may evolve as well. One way that you you receive love, you like receiving love or your spouse it may change after 5 years 10 years especially especially like me and we are having kids now yeah. the way my wife used to want me to spend time with her now she wants you like for example she like us to spend time doing things together mm-hmm. like folding clothes uh that's mm-hmm. how she want me to express my love yeah. so it's it's, it's it's different when 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 you guys are dating you don't have kids you, before you get married you know it's 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 different from when you have kids when you have kids you, I'll, I'll call you you tell me <laughs> Hey Jonathan. <laughs> I'm telling you it's different. You know, then 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 you have the first kid, mm. you know, things change. You have the second thing, things change. Mm-hmm. And that's where communication now has been a very important part. Okay. Like communication because think about it. Because when you were all all just two of us, it was easier for me to love you. Now we have someone else. Is 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 very different because we have two kids and this kids depend on us and so if if you don't tell me i want you to love me like this and this and this mm-hmm. i will not know because i'm trying to still love you the way i used to love you so that's why as 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 couples you know that time because life is changing they have to communicate you know communication has to be a very crucial part of that because everybody wants to be loved different Well, I, I'm sure I, my wife can say this the way I wanted I was lo- I wanted to be loved to back then is not the same way I'm being loved now so it's it's different we we'll talk a little bit more about that about communication the fact that you mentioned um well, 
how can a couple prioritize communication and conflict re resolution? I'm, I want to tell you what we do. For us, we try not to go two days without resolve, at least a day without resolving the issue. Uh, and resolving can be can mean different. Uh, resolving can mean are we going to the t are we going to bed and really talking about it intensively, or sometimes is is it a big issue whereby I'm like I just need time. Don't I, I just need time a little bit. Yeah. We can talk about this later. But I don't think it's it's good for you to go days or something happened in your marriage or in your relationship and you throw it under the rug. Which means you're just burying it without talking about it. That can be a very marriage killer. So when um, in my church we were doing a, a conference, a marriage conference, and we were talking about how you, a lot of couples just hide things under the rug and then something just blows up out of nowhere. Either the wife didn't know that the husband was going through this thing and then one day that you did this, this, this and this and this and this and this and this. It's been 20 years or 10 years and it just comes up. So it's important to solve it as soon as possible. When it happens, a day or two, fix it. You know, and, and, and move on. If we, we have to ask forgiveness, ask forgiveness. And if, if, if it's a big issue, like uh, uh, something like someone cheated, that can, the forgiveness can be different from forgiveness of someone just maybe said something wrong. So the, the forgiveness of, of an issue differs from, from what the kind of mistake someone did. So, mm -hmm. But communication is important to a sense where you shouldn't sleep at least two days we without solving the issue. That is not, yeah, is not good. Certainly. So um, that's if that is like <coughs> kind of bring me. Uh, to me, I just want to bring things back, right? Mm. I just want to bring things back a little bit to spicy things a little okay. bit. So, um, what are some key differences between Christian uh, courtship mm -hmm. and? different and uh like modern dating okay christian courtship yeah is you are doing what christ-like living is for example if you're christian and you're dating mm -hmm. you shouldn't be spending time with your girlfriend alone without someone else being there you should have boundaries <clears throat> because and i'm telling you this from ex from experience because you you think you got it i promise you do not you do not have it. It's gonna it's gonna take just just a little bit when it's just two of you for things to escalate. So it's important if you are meeting your girlfriend as as a youth, really have someone there. Have accountability partner. Accountability partner can be your Christian brother, your Christian sister, if you are a female. I, I'd not recommend a guy having a accountability partner with a female, because that's that can that can sure, be also yeah. tricky, you know. If it's if you're a guy, find if it's a youth pastor, if it's a if you if you trust your dad. I mean, I don't know how many how much of us, how many of us trust our dads <laughs> like that. Uh, if you trust your dad, you know, have him as your accountability partner. Have a brother who you trust from church as an accountability partner, and if things almost goes wrong or if you're going to a date and you you know you're going to be alone and it's not in public have them call you if if you're if it's too much have them call you after every maybe 20 minutes that is too much that something can happen in 20 minutes and <laughs> it can go too far every 10 minutes they have them check on you uh, 10 minutes five minutes so that they know that you're not doing something wrong that's 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 important also if possible do devotions. I did this with my wife when when we were dating. Have like now we have Bible apps, you no know, Bible apps. You can uh, do um, devotions on those, and she's there, she's reading, and you guys like have like a devotion. Start building that when you're caught, when you're dating. Start at that age. So when you're getting married, it's not something new. You know this is the thing. You're dating, you've never done that, and you're coming to marriage, then you start it. But think about it, you started it when you're dating. When you come together, it's something you used to do. It's, it's just a normal thing to you guys. Of course, don't, don't take it as normal, but 
it's, it's something you're used to. So it's, it's a continuation of what you guys did. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, the, the world recordship is totally opposite to what I just said. They do what they want. But if you want to follow Christian courtship, I think if you have an accountability partner, don't be alone with a girlfriend uh, without, without someone there or just in private. Make sure there's someone there uh, and try to, to read the world together and, and build each other. Uh, there is a book I was reading. It's called uh, by Miles Monroe. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him. Uh, he talks about singleness and he talks about as a man supposed to build a wife or your woman so even if you guys are boyfriend and girlfriend you should try to find important christian materials to help each other build each other build your girlfriend so that when you get married you know that you helped each other to build to grow together so that's that's my take on that mm, that's that's great um <clears throat> I know I'm asking too much question. So I tell her it's just. Yeah, you used to be a youth leader. So you guys, you guys know that you're talking to a youth person. Are you going so, to advice? Yeah, that, it, I think the advice is yeah, really helping yeah, a lot yeah, of youth, youth uh, ourselves as well. People. Yeah, sure. Uh, sure. It's good sure. advice. Good ones. And um, uh, that brings me to ask like, what, what, what about the time whereby you having your partner, mm -hmm. right? And then there are some stuff that somebody's doing mm -hmm. okay i'm gonna share it like in two or three different parts mm -hmm. the first part is like is that okay that your partner have uh men friends as like friends that's a good, i know that's this a good this, is, this is can be controversial <laughs> but let's <laughs> let, 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 let dive into that because there, there I'll, are I will, questions I'll, I'll answer that with what my dad would tell me yeah, okay there is no friendship between a man and a female this, this, <laughs> wow this, this wow. is yeah. just really? not that that's again okay. that's the, hey, hey you this is my opinion okay <laughs> all right this is not professional <laughs> advice okay. this is my opinion okay, okay. i don't want to okay. make sure i make that that's clear. this is my opinion all right um before I got married, I had yeah. a female friend. You okay. were, we were very close. Okay. I had to, to break that friendship because now I'm married. It's different. Your, your wife should be your best friend, should be your closest friend. Like, the, like, for example, and this is what as men we fall into traps. Let's say I'm fighting with my wife and a female is my best friend and I go to her. Let's say, just, 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 just give it a chance that she also had an eye about on me, right? And I'm going to her. My wife is doing this and this and this and this. What do you think will happen? This okay. is a best friend who mm -hmm. also had, had some quite, on has an eye on me. What do you think will happen? I will answer that with uh, a kind. Of, it's kind of a comedian yeah. comic, but he says something like this. It's kind of a bit long, but <laughs> <laughs> he says something like this. But for him, he said as a, a woman, uh, a female who has a friend, male, mm -hmm. uh, a male friend, I mean. So he says, imagine you have a, fr a male who is your friend, mm -hmm. and then you're having a problem with your boyfriend, mm -hmm. your husband, or whatever. And then whenever like, the person, your boyfriend, is doing something wrong, you're going to him, look at what my boyfriend does, look at And then you're just giving him weapons. Mm -hmm. You're giving him all the things that to be a perfect man for you. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> you mean he saw that you know um, if I do this, she's not gonna like it. If I do this, she's not gonna like it. So you just bringing him for you. You might not have a but, idea. But, but also remember, yeah, she you are, you are telling him how to act. How to act? Mm -hmm. you, you, you're not telling him how to be a man. You're telling him how to act. And how not to it's act? It's very yeah. different. Sure, <clears throat> sure. That's how I'm gonna answer to that. So. so you, you're gonna be giving him the chance or her the chance to be like the perfect man or exactly. woman that you want to have and then for the moment that everything just clashes goes down not even clashes yeah He's, you're gonna be vulnerable women are very vulnerable creatures yeah one day you'll be vulnerable and mm. then you fall in his arm and that's it I, that's you won't all. you won't even be like the end of it it's, you're just gonna be you're gonna have a fight with the boyfriend or mm -hmm. husband and then yeah. you're gonna be vulnerable to this guy mm -hmm. and then the thing is once once you once a, a woman's brain mm -hmm. is open clearly yeah. Open clear, which means once she opens up her heart, everything else is open. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I, I'm telling you, if if you have a wife yeah. and you listen to her, talk to her, she opens up everything to you. Mm. You are you are your sex life will be better when you guys have a good communication. Mm. Again, this is my opinion. You guys are not married, so when, when you get married, just know that when you listen to your wife, when she she talks to you, she you are emotionally supporting her. You are opening up your yep. your your intimacy life sexually. It's going to be better because of of because of that you being there emotionally for her. So if another boyfriend is being there emotionally for her, I promise you, something is gonna happen. Something is definitely going to happen, okay. and for a man, it can't be the same thing. Mm. Don't do it. That's a trap. If you have a if you have a girlfriend, don't have female best friends. If you have a boyfriend, don't have female boyfriends. Uh, female uh, male friends. It's a trap. It is a trap. If if you're married, especially your female friends have to be a wise friend. If they're not doing that, that friendship is over simple and clear if they're not going to be your best friend over that friendship should not be there that's that's what i did if i had a female friend you're not my wife's friend we cannot be friends i am married be my wife's friend same thing with her male friend if she she had a male friends if, if you're know, not trying to be my friend that can't work it is what it is it just can't work if you can give me in the bible where someone was married and had a male best friend maybe maybe i'm reading a wrong bible any of you have ever read of that? <laughs> Not that I've read. So okay. no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what, what, what if now? I mean, this is just general, right? Where we find everything online and uh-huh. say, like people say, like if you trust yourself enough, uh-huh. you shouldn't be caring about your male having a female friend or your woman having a male friend because you trust her you trust yourself so you don't need to worry about them having those all i'm saying is in the marriage there must be boundaries and those kind of boundaries shouldn't be crossed i i I think there should boundaries and those those are one of the boundaries that i think as a married man as a married woman you should have those boundaries not to have such kind of friendship because those are you just welcoming the devil in your house not knowing it, it really are because you think you you think you're you know you're perfect you're not something's gonna happen you're gonna run with this guy and the, we are we are men i was one single had friends i know if they're in a relationship if something happens i can fall back there so what i'm saying is really you should have boundaries and that's one of the boundaries i think is very uh, again, everybody's different. What I'm saying is you should have boundaries and those boundaries entails really not being vulnerable to other men about your man. And if, if, you, if you're a friend, you want to be vulnerable. So boundaries is very important. That's what I'm saying. That's good. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about finances and relationship because I know uh, just here in the in the U.S. alone, the statistics show that um, the highest rates of divorce is caused by financial yeah. mishap even or something, so, or something like that. Yeah, sure. yeah and sure. even Christian homes. So, how, what can couples really do to be able to take a grasp of their financial? Uh, finances? I, I would say what we do, and I'm sure my wife is not uh, won't, won't hold me, but uh, grudge for, for sharing this. Mm. But what we do for us, we we open. Uh, Four bank accounts. Okay, we have our joint savings account, and we have our joint che- checking account, and then I have my own checking account, not savings, checking account, and she has her own checking account. Now, how do we do it? We all have jobs, right? When we get paid, we have ninety percent of our pay going our joint saving our checking account. Now, because you know she's the wife, she does a lot of things in the house, not me. She gets to get more to her personal account because she needs uh, a little bit of things. Because we need her makeup, she needs her stuff that she doesn't want to go in uh, in our savings uh, checking account and, and and ask. Because as we have a rule, if you are buying anything more than a hundred, you have to ask the other person's permission to get it. If it's anything below a hundred then you can just spend it. But if, if it's more than a hundred, uh, I want to spend a hundred dollars 
and um, I want to use the 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 the, the, the joint saving checking account or savings. I have to call her. Hey, I want to buy this. What do you think? She can call me out and say, Hey, yeah, I don't think that's important. I don't think you need that. Why? Because she has another alternative, and they can do the same. You know. So her own personal account is to is to buy small small things that. She might need, you're not putting like thousands of dollars there. You're putting like a hundred a week, 200 a week, 300, 500. And then for me, I put 150, 200. Just if I want to go to Chipotle, I don't need to, to you know, tell my wife I'm going to Chipotle. Because, <laughs> hey, are we supposed to say brand name? Yeah. No, no, you're good. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Oh, okay. okay. just, just an example. It's an example. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if I, if I want to go eat out, you know, and I have, I have friends, you know, I want to spend couple dollars i can do that but at the end of the day and what we also do we have monthly meetings yeah every month we have financial reviews you see how your company does financial review mm -hmm. we, my wife and i do that she opens her own account she, she tells me this is how i spent my money and i open my my personal account this is how i spent my money and we open our joint account this is where our money went this is how we spent our money, and this is how we need to spend. That. So we, we have a plan for the next month. Like we, we have a plan. Okay, this is how we're gonna do this month, and this is how we're gonna spend. How much we wanna plan to save? How much we want to yeah. give this month? So that that's that's how we do. Because I I think when you're married, her money should be your money. Your money should be your money. So it shouldn't be like uh, you have your own finances. I have my own finances. I think you guys should combine. And and because when you're combined and you live in unity, it's uh, it's better. You grow together better. Yeah. Well, if, if I can, well, if I can give a different perspective mm -hmm. on the aspect of apart from just marriage finances, mm -hmm. what about preparation for marriage in terms of you know uh, uh, getting ready for a wedding? Yeah, yeah. Paying for this and that, uh, also, roles, uh, events, nowadays, things like that. <clears throat> you also have to keep an account. When you're preparing to marriage, remember mm -hmm. there's other people who come in with debt. Student loans. Mm -hmm. So you have to remember people are coming in marriage. So when you're when you're dating, you have to talk about the student loans. How much student loans do you have? How are we planning to pay for those student loans? Uh, are we going to pay for them? Are we going to de let them default? So I think those are conversations you should have during dating. And of course, wedding, we are Africans. Dowry, she start talking about how are you gonna. I mean, am I, I expect to pay dowry myself, or are you gonna contribute to the dowry? Yeah. And contribute the, the <laughs> woman to contribute to your dowry. Exactly. What culture Ooh, is that? that <laughs> since when? Since when? That's what I'm saying. No, I'm, you know, my dowry. I, I'm doing myself. <laughs> exactly. So you should have that conversation. No, if if, if well, they're gonna charge you for twenty thousand dollars. Uh, you have to, okay. Uh, you I mean, that's to, another uh, topic as well in terms yeah. of like what families Family ask. Ask. should ask. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, but just the case, uh, as, uh, the uh, question Taylor is asking <clears throat> is it more about um, if we, we can get it, if I get it actually, mm. your question, yeah. into preparation for the wedding day. Like, what does it take? Like, how can somebody really prepare themselves? Like for wedding day or like minimize, minimize the finances, the finances expenses, expenses for, for that day so what we did mm. we we hired a wedding planner <laughs> it's expensive too expensive <laughs> mm -hmm. uh but the other way there's a lot of apps or have an excel sheet mm. um just write down every single expense that is going to be your card in that day like Every even if he's is buying uh uh what's the what's the most minimum thing? Even if it's just buying a spoon, put it there. Okay. Put every single expense and have have it have options. Do we need to go with this expensive one or we can go with this cheaper one? This this is why me and my wife are different. And she knows this. I'm not gonna get in trouble with this for this. For me, before I buy something, I really have to go places, check it out. Is this is this the best price that we get, mm. or oh, there is better than this? That's really African. <laughs> yeah. That's bro. That's the cheaper. African. <laughs> no, not only cheaper, African. They go to the especially if you're going with African moms. Please, I'm so sorry, mom. <laughs> like African mom, 
bro, don't go to the market with the African man. <laughs> about your mom because my mom is different i'm <laughs> telling you actually you can find this is like let's say fifty thousand, mm-hmm. or this is like fifty dollars mm-hmm. this is a hundred she'll be like you'll be like let's buy this this looks great this is fine she'll be like Mm-mm, let's go there let's go find there <laughs> yeah. when we go there no that is 100 you see i told you this but there's always a better then price you go you find a terry you see and if you buy that she'll be telling like what if we bought that one where we said 100 and then we see this at terry you see now the difference exactly so, my point. i see that's african thought <laughs> <laughs> what i'm trying to say is this always so what i'm if you're not manage your finances like that mm-hmm. for wedding preparation i think you need to write down all the expenses like uh-huh. every expenses write it down uh find maybe your best man the, the maid of honor mm-hmm. let them help you to to find better prices and and but also you and your wife have to decide what's important and what's not important mm-hmm. for for wedding because not everything on a wedding is important uh and again this is my opinion i i really don't think wedding should be that glamorous because you're feeling people True. giving them uh <laughs> feeding them with forty thousand dollars <laughs> <laughs> that you can use to buy a mortgage or you buy I'm telling you, man. <laughs> something. Yeah, this is my opinion. Hey, ladies, don't kill me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> don't, you know, your men should make, give you a wedding of your dream, but also, can that money be invested elsewhere for something better? Right. So. No, that's a good thought. Mm-hmm. That's really I love great. that. And um, if you can give a, what is the best relationship advice that you have ever received, given, or heard? Talk, talk, talk. Talk to your wife. Talk to your husband. Communicate. Mm. Communication clears so much that people don't know. It's very crucial to communicate. It's very crucial to talk. Saturn, one thing that Saturn knows how to do is to attack marriages. Marriages is the most important thing that Saturn is attacking. Mm. So if you're not talking in your marriage, if you're not talking in your marriage, Satan is going to talk to one of you and he's going to lie to you about your spouse. If, right. if, if, you, if, if, if you don't, if, if, if maybe your, your spouse is doing something, but if, you, if your spouse is not communicating to what the spouse is saying, she's not saying to you, he's, you're not talking to them. You know, that, that, that lie that the Satan is saying, for example, you yeah. can be like, because uh, I can feel something. I can feel like my wife is not respecting me nowadays. Something is wrong, but that that may not true. It may not just. It may not be that. It may not. It may be that she's also going through something, and because of that, she's going through some emotions. But in my head, my wife is not respecting me anymore. Mm. But if I don't tell her, I'm gonna start piling emotions, emotions, and the one day it's gonna come. Poof, exactly. And yeah. it's over. It's put out. Yeah. Yes. So, talk some more big things. Talk all of it don't put anything under the carpet mm-hmm. i've been five years mm-hmm. but again just talk talking is important and what is the worst relationship advice that you've ever heard received <laughs> or given familiar <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is this in english familiar be, be patient ah uh, to be patient yeah and that, that's in Swahili? Yeah, yeah. Mwile is Swahili. I'm yeah. trying to translate it in English. Be patient. Or translate it in French or something. I'm trying to translate it. Be patient, which means don't don't speak. Just 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 Oh, uh, like accumulate. No, no, not accumulate. Uh this is why I like my wife being here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> she understands you like no one else does. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, she have done this you know she knew what this meant uh, so like like for example let's let's see domestic violence right yeah a man is beating his wife mm. our culture will mm. tell him just 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 stay there what's the word for that just 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 be patient just be patient with him but the man is beating you oh um if i get if i get it it's just kind of just holding on to all hold, hold hold on just exactly. just hold on. on yeah i 
I think it's important to hold on, mm-hmm. but also it's important to communicate with us. We don't just hold on and do nothing. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. It's important to hold on, but don't just hold on and do nothing. Mm. If you need to go get counseling, go get counseling. Don't just hold on. Because especially in the African cultures, mm. we are more of just hold on. Everything's going to work out. It's your husband. It's... <laughs> Again, I do not condone violence at all. Well, you know, if something like that happened, get help. Right. No, do we. Yeah. You know? Sure. Just go get help. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I'm not gonna be like, hold on. If my daughter is telling me that, I'm gonna tell her, hold on. Yeah. Go get help right away. Mm-hmm. So that's the worst I've, advice I've had yeah. for saying, just, just, just hold just on. Just hold on. Just hold on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, than talking about it and, and fixing the issue, we just being told to hold on. Oh, I, I don't think that that works. I love that. I love that. Um, <clears throat> just to conclude and to finish, uh, unless a tailor has something to say. Uh, I heard someone say it, the best relationship advice that they've received is make a list of things that you want to see in your partner and be that list. Be the oh. list. Yeah, that's that's where the love language comes in. Yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. You yeah. the love language. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so make a list of yeah. everything you want to get in your partner. But you also have to be comfortable careful in that mm. just because you want to get it doesn't mean that shit they want to get it mm. because think about it yeah you, you're the one who wants it mm-hmm. did she have a different language excuse me love language sure right mm-hmm. so let's say you you write everything down that you want to see in your partner yeah then you're doing it you're telling mm-hmm. your wife this is what i want how you to love me that may not be the way she, she that would, might not be the way she would want mm. to be loved yeah because sure. that's how you want to be loved that's why you're showing her love sure but maybe she has a different way she wants you to show love to her mm. so it's important but you have to you might want to be ca- very a little bit careful, careful with that with that sure because you know again you have to understand their love language mm-hmm. and they have to understand your love language too sure thank you bonnie i think really, you really appreciate your advice has been very moment. informative i mean uh uh we would be great husbands, <laughs> right? Uh, my God, grace. Yeah, my God grace. grace. You have to praise God. My, my God, God grace. grace. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we call it really, it's been an honor to have you, Bonner. We would yeah. appreciate your time, your advices uh, as a, a father, a husband first, a father. Yeah, that comes um, first. Don't, don't confuse. Yeah. <laughs> don't get me in trouble. Yeah, yeah a, hus- <laughs> <laughs> a husband, a father, um, and... Um, a an engineer yeah. so and a minister and a minister yeah. so we really are so glad to have you and we hope that we would have you the next time too uh, when we can prepare for something else and for our listener we thank you so much for waiting until right now we would appreciate your time and we really hope to see you the next episode and for now if you enjoy it keep it for yourself all right <laughs>